Yo, what's up guys, it's Talon. Today, we're gonna be giving you guys what I'm gonna call a meta report. And I plan on doing a video like this maybe once or so a month, maybe a little bit more often. And essentially, this is gonna be my version of a tier list. Now, the difference between this and a tier list, I'm not gonna go over every individual champion and exactly where they fall into the meta, because honestly, I don't think that's the most valuable use of my or your time. What I think is the most valuable use of our time is me telling you what the top champions are in every role, why they're the top champions, and how the general meta shapes up, and how some certain counters to champions, you know, for example, Bai is quite strong in the jungle right now, but certain champions like Morgana can counter her really well, and we're going to get into more details of stuff like that. And if you have questions about how your favorite champion fits into this overall meta, leave that in the comment section below, and we can certainly talk about that. I can give you guys more specifics on specific, champi specific champions. However, I thought, again, that this would be kind of a better overall understanding that we can gain of the meta as a whole and just talking about how it works i'm going to also do patch reviews more often now talking about the different patches that way you guys can kind of use this as a baseline and then understand when i talk over different patches how the individual patch may change the meta slightly and then we do again this type of video maybe once or so a month anyways let's get right into the top lane Okay guys, so starting off with the top lane, some of the best individual champions are going to be a lot of bruisers, such as Darius, Renekton, Garen, Aatrox, Set. These types of champions, due to the new items with Eclipse and Sundered Sky, especially Sundered Sky being used by a lot of them, as well as the fact that these champions are just extremely versatile, makes them the top of the meta. So again, that itemization alongside the fact that bruisers, not only are they strong on side lanes, split pushing, good in lane, but they're also very tanky, very good in team fights, and they're just generally almost always extremely strong there's very few situations where they're not going to be very very strong in this meta now on the other side we have split pushers like Jax, you know camille fiora a lot of these champions despite being okay individually as champions aren't necessarily very good right now in terms of the meta one because they don't always use the, the items quite as well but they can use the items still but the bigger kind of issue with them is these hex gates these hex gates make it really hard for you to actually effectively get a split push off because Anytime that you're, you know, on the side lane threatening a turret, anyone from the enemy team, even if they're on the opposite side of the map, can take a hex gate and be covering you within seconds. And then these split pushers are also going to be worse in team fights, which obviously is going to make them not able to match, you know, again, these Aatrox, Darius, these types of champions in the team fights. Now, moving on to tanks, tanks aren't bad right now because they are able to generally match a lot of these bruisers on the side lane, and they're still able to come into team fights and be extremely useful. The only problem with tanks right now is champs like Darius and Garen and Aatrox as well. These champs are all really, really good into tanks, just in a general matchup sense. Darius, of course, can easily stack five stacks onto any tank and then has that true damage. Garen has the true damage ult, and Aatrox can get land a lot of sweet spots if he's into these tanks, which is why tanks are okay, better than the split pushers right now. However, they still struggle a bit in lane against a lot of these bruiser champions that are really strong. Now, alongside that, I want to make it very clear that the most important part about top lane is often counterpicking. Having a late pick and picking once you see the enemy champion is most important. So, for example, you might not, you know, think Gwen is the best champion right now in the meta, but if enemy team locks in a really tanky champion, then Gwen's all of a sudden a very strong pick. Same with the Fiora, Camille, right? Like, these champs can counter tanks, and there's these different counterpicks, depending on the scenario, that you definitely still have to look out for. For example, Jace is going to be really good into a lot of squishier ranged top laners as well. Stuff like this is something that you definitely need to pay attention to. And the last thing to mention about the meta is the Wind Brothers. These stupid, annoying guys are always broken. They can build tank, they can build crit, they can build like 97 different ways and still be broken. Especially Yasuo with Grasp right now in the top lane, going Armor Boots Rush, and then going either Blade of the Rune King or Wit's End, depending on the game. And then just building really tanky after that. That is such an OP build, and that's why Yasuo, as well as Yone for a similar reason, despite not necessarily fitting into this super bruisery category, are extremely strong due to the fact that they can build in this insane way not even having to fully utilize their crit passives okay guys so moving on to the jungle and there's kind of four main champions that i feel are quite overpowered in this meta right now and that's really going to be viego riven Vi, and lee sin so why these champions you might ask well the first reason is these bruiser items that we spoke about earlier sundered sky especially again making these champion, these bruiser champions quite strong, and Eclipse working really well on certain champions like Lee, especially into these tankier matchups. But alongside this, clear speed is extremely important, especially for Viego and Vi. These champions have immensely fast clear speeds, and that allows them to get level 4 oftentimes before first scuttle, win that scuttle fight with the level advantage, and snowball the game from there. Now, three of these champions in Riven, Lee Sin, and Viego 
all struggle a bit in the tankier matchups and much prefer playing into those squishier matchups where they can easily get resets easily one shot their enemy champions stuff like this so that's going to mean that a champion like Vi, not only having a fast clear speed and good damage but being extremely tanky and having the cc is going to counter all three of these champions extremely effectively in the jungle which is why she specifically is so strong now there are other champions that work quite well in this meta some of them being assassins such as eve and talon now i don't necessarily think assassins as a whole fit into this meta amazingly however certain champs like eve and talon have really really good overall numbers and stats and pretty good clear speeds which means that they're still going to work quite well in this meta additionally because of the same meta that we just spoke about with the viego the vi the lisa and the riven Tank and bruiser junglers who can beat them in the 1v1s and tank up a lot of their burst damage are going to be extremely effective. So having Maokai, for example, uh, having uh, Amumu, Volibear, these types of champs are actually really good in the meta for that reason as well. Not quite at the same level of these top tier champions, because these top tier champions can be picked in every game, can carry pretty much any scenario. But those types of champions are still going to be quite strong. And then when you have these tankier matchups, Lilia is going to be an amazing tank counter. For obvious reasons, she has true damage, she has a ton of burst damage, she's also AP, which means the itemization that they go cannot both prevent, you know, your AD carry and you from dealing damage, right? It's only going to be one or the other since you're going to be AP, your AD carry is going to be AD, so that's also going to be another reason that Lilia is going to be nice. Now, a specific counterpick, as we spoke about in the intro to Vi, is going to be Morgana due to the Black Shield allowing her to not get CC'd or stopping her teammates from getting CC'd by Vi, so that's going to make Morgana a really good niche counterpick in this meta. As always, any type of counter pick is going to be valuable in scenarios where it's a good matchup for them. So again, even like a Mundo is not bad into a Vi oftentimes, or just these certain champions that you want to pick. Always depends on the matchup, always depends on all of these different things, but that's going to be like a general explanation of how the current jungle meta is shaping up. Alright guys, so a thing to understand about mid lane is the mid lane meta is always impacted heavily by the jungle meta. So if you notice the four champions that we mentioned for jungle are all AD champions. So what is this going to mean? It's going to mean that we're going to want AP champions in mid lane, that way our damage types are separate so that the enemy team cannot itemize as effectively against both the mid and the jungle at the same time. So a lot of AP mages especially are going to be extremely strong. Champions like Zoe into pretty much any matchup, Lissandra into a lot of these assassin matchups, Syndra, Vladimir, all of these champions, AP scaling really effectively, still not too bad in the early game oftentimes. And then you have these other two champions as well, Morgana and Ziggs. And both of these champions are similarly obviously AP, they're very safe, and they have absurd wave clear right now. These champions can stall out games to 20 plus minutes so often because of their wave clear, it can carry games that seem unwinnable, can seal objectives extremely effectively, and are just overall really, really strong right now. So what are some counters into these types of matchups? Well, Kassadin is going to be the first one that just jumps out, right? Kassadin obviously has the magic damage shield, meaning that into AP champs, Kassadin's already happy. Now, these mages are also very squishy, which means Kassadin can one-shot them. These mages are also weak in the early game, which means that Kassadin can get through their early game and scale up really effectively. So honestly, Kassadin might just be the best champion in the entire meta right now for mid lane because of these reasons. Now, what's counter into Kassadin? You have your Jace. Jace is an amazing AD lane bully, and AD lane bullies are exactly how you counter Kassadin. You can go, again, Jace, Auction, Lucian. These types of champs are going to be great counter picks and do a lot of these squishier matchups that don't have as good of early lane phases, and they're going to allow you to snowball quite effectively. But the obvious downside is that these champions are AD, meaning they won't prioritize or they won't uh, synergize as well with these certain jungler champions. Now, Akali is similar to Kassadin in a lot of ways, in that she's a good AP assassin. Again, the AP damage type is important. She's good into squishy champions and really likes those matchups. But obviously, she does as well get countered by Kassadin, so that's something to look out for as well. And then the last couple champions to mention are Yone and Yasuo, as per usual, just being, being their usual broken selves. Doesn't matter if the meta is AD, AP, whatever the heck it is. They're always just going to have some broken build again, the grass build that we talked about earlier with the tanky items. They're often going to be rushing Wits End and sometimes even Mercury Treads as well in these matchups due to the fact that they're usually playing into AP matchups as we spoke about overall. And so just as a general thing, guys, again, the AP mages are going to be overall the best in the meta, but we spoke about some counters to them, some ways to play into them, and that's going to overall be the kind of major meta for mid lane right now. All right, guys, so next up, we have ADC. Now, ADC Varus is just by far the best champion right now in this meta. Like, he's just an insane lane bully, really good, still scales pretty well, good into tanks with his AP build, good into squishies with his lethality build. Just overall, he really dominates the meta. Now, there's kind of three champions below him who are still quite strong and very versatile as well. 
that's going to be Ezreal, Kai'Sa, and Zaya. These champions generally can play into kind of any matchup with any support, and they're going to be very happy. Now, the rest of the meta is going to be quite sup um, support dependent. So, for example, playing Zeri, Tristana, Jinx, Vayne, Twitch, these types of champions with a Lulu or with a Yumi, with these enchanter supports who can help you really hyper carry. Now, on the other hand, Having these champions like Lucian, Callista, Samira, Jin, Misfortune, Draven are going to like playing with aggro, often tank supports. Not always tank supports. Obviously, these champs can still work with especially aggressive good laners. Like, for example, Nami works really well with Lucian or these other specific combos are always, you know, going to depend on the specific game. But as a whole, those champs that I listed are really going to prefer playing in the more aggro matchups. Now you're going to have Caitlyn to kind of counter these low-range champions. She's going to counter Draven, Lucian, anything that has low-range Bane as well in the early game. Caitlyn's going to do quite well in two because she's going to abuse that extremely effectively with her high range. But again, as a whole, generally speaking, ADC meta is really just whoever deals the most damage. So again, the Varus is really going to be the champ with the most damage. And then those next three that we listed, the Ezreal, Zaya, Kai'Sa, they're going to kind of follow up that. And then the rest just depends totally on your support. But generally, my, my overall thing for ADC is it doesn't really matter too much what you play because all champs have a relatively similar purpose. As long as you're able to get out of lane fine and scale up effectively or just use your champion strengths to your advantages, then you're going to be completely fine in this current meta. Okay, guys, so lastly, we have support. Now, Lulu and Soraka are really going to be the two best supports at the moment in terms of enchanters especially. These champs can really just make hyper carries overly fed make them pretty much 1v9 lulu with these auto attacking champions like these hyper carry you know the zeri the tristanas the veins all these types of champs lulu is just going to make it absolutely broken she's going to help them get out of lane phase safely and then scale up and just be able to 2v8 any team fight now soraka on the other hand is really good with these tankier champions but also aggressive adcs as well and really just anyone because she can bail people out of crazy scenarios with her absurd amounts of healing that she has as well as self peel now, other champs like Yumi and Sona are still going to do a similar job in terms of helping the hyper carries. But in my opinion, Yumi is generally extremely overrated because not only do Lulu and Soraka do her job better, but Yumi's lane phase is really weaker overall than these other champions. And her lane phase is only really good at surviving into poke matchups. But as soon as you play Yumi into an aggressive tank support with an aggressive ADC, you're going to struggle a lot more compared to these other champs with better overall peel. Now, Nami and Jan are going to be some of the carry supports in terms of enchanters. Oftentimes, it's hard to carry in solo queue with Lulu, with Yumi. Even if these champs are super strong, right? It's going to be hard to actually carry in the solo queue games, generally speaking, because these champs just don't have as much agency as these tank supports and as these Namis and Janas who can make a lot more engages, peel, better plays, just generally speaking. So again, because of that, these tanks are going to be preferable in the solo queue games a lot more, especially... Thresh is extremely powerful, for example, right now. Alongside Thresh, Nautilus is going to be the other tank that just generally is extremely strong in this meta. And then, of course, your other ones like Leona, Alistar, right? These are all going to be strong. Braum has some really good synergies with certain champs, such as Lucian, Ezreal, and Ash. And then again, see the ADC uh, part of this for the general synergies. You're going to want to play these Lulus, these Sorakas with the hyper carries. But then these more aggressive champs you get, like such as Lucian and, and those types of things, you're going to want to play the Namis, the more aggressive tank supports like Leona, Thresh, Nautilus, this type of thing. And it's always, again, most important to play what synergizes well with your teammates, but also what's going to be able to make the best plays to carry, especially in those solo queue games, which is why I generally, in terms of the overall meta, I lean towards enchanters being a little bit stronger when you're playing duo with an ADC, and I lean towards tanks being a little bit stronger when we're playing solo queue and really trying to play make ourselves and kind of carry the overall game. So that's going to do it for my first meta report video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want more in the future, let me know what you thought about this style of video. If you're interested in learning about how your champion fits in the meta, and maybe I didn't mention it specifically, let me know in the comments below. Ask me any questions about the meta that you might have. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do coaching. Link in the description to that for just $15 an hour from a rank 5 sovereign player. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next Wild Rift video.